In the years before memory began, the supercontinent Gondwana land moved slowly over the giant Tethys Sea before colliding with the Eurasian plate. At that moment, the Indian subcontinent joined hands with the land of Nepal, raising them in a graceful meeting of palms, saluting the heavens with the intertwining of several mighty fingers, the fold mountains of the Himalayas. Nepal, as we know it today, was formed from over a hundred principalities and states in 1769 AD by the legendary king Prithvi Narayan Shah, who hailed from the state of Gorkha. The state is a parliamentary democracy with a constitutional monarchy. 1990 was the year when the democracy took its first steps. In fact, the inspiration for the establishment of such a democracy in Nepal came from the contribution of the Nepali youth in the long struggle for Indian independence. With the turn of the last century, many Nepalese youth came to India for higher studies. Among them were B.P. Koirala, Surya Prasad Upadhyay, Krishna Prasad Bhattarai and Manmohan Adhikari. Thus, when the freedom struggle came around, there were many Nepalese youth in Varanasi, Patna, Allahabad and Calcutta. Many of these leaders later formed the Nepali Congress Party in the wake of the Indian freedom struggle. This bridge over the Mechi River near Kakar Bhitta is a signpost of trust between the two nations. The open borders over 1751 kilometers in length allow for regular people-to-people -people contact. Gurkha soldiers hail from many different hill tribes of Nepal. They could be Gurungs, Magars, Limbus or Tamangs. More than 40,000 of them are serving in the Indian Army alone. 115,000 of them receive pensions from the Indian state. Tourism contributes over 11% of the foreign exchange earnings for the Nepalese economy. There are numerous recreational facilities. For the tourist who likes the temporal pleasures of water running between his toes or splashing his face, there's river rafting. The rivers might look peaceful, even calm, but remember the adrenaline begins to flow as soon as you hit a patch of white water. From time immemorial, the close relations of both the countries have inspired architects and artists on both sides. A good example of such interaction can be seen in the buildings in the valley of Kathmandu comprising three ancient cities, Kathmandu, Bhaktpur and Patan or Lalitpur which was founded by Emperor Ashoka in the 3rd century BC. Nepal is primarily an agrarian economy. Like any other developing country, the majority of the population is dependent on crop yield. South Nepal is the country's food bowl. It constitutes just about a quarter of the arable land, but produces three-fourths of its rice and wheat. Almost all the agricultural operations are undertaken traditionally. Nepal is an agricultural country and uh, almost 80% of the population depend on agriculture. I think our development strategy must build from agriculture sector or rural sector. Uh, now, what we are finding is there is some problem in terms of investment strategy and uh, population structure. Whereas on the one hand, we have 80% people living and depending on agriculture. On the other hand, agriculture's contribution to gross domestic product is decreasing. So that means the Nepalese population in the larger segments are not contributing adequately to uh, the gross domestic product. And this means the, we need more emphasis on rural sector, we need more emphasis on agricultural sector, and agriculture must be the backbone of uh, the future development for Nepal. Today, while modern amenities like internet cafes and electricity are found in major cities like Kathmandu or Pokhara, there is little change in the villages. Perhaps the day will come when the brightness of an electric light will bounce and play effortlessly between the fingers and needle of a woman sewing a future for herself and her progeny. 
For now, she waits patiently. <laughs>